Hey, you're listening to the High Voltage Rock and Roll Radio Show with the Night Prowler. Oh, wait, nope, that's my other job. Now we're listening to another episode of Answers for Everything podcast. We appreciate you spending some of your free time with us. Don't forget to like and share on our socials. If you have any questions or want to send us anything naughty, just send out to our Instagram at AFE underscore podcast. That's A as an anus, F as in frankly, and E as enough. The underscore symbol, then the word podcast. So if you have a drink, sit back, enjoy the show. Yeah, it's like a manly beast or a beast of a man. I can't really decide from this angle. I'd say it's a, a, man, it's a man beast. A man beast? Yes. And I suppose if you pulled your pants up, I wouldn't have to look at that thing. Trim yeah. it once in a while, bro. A man meat. Man meat and <laughs> man beast. It's not meat made for a man, though, is well, it? It's ambidextrous. Oh. <laughs> it'll, arm wrestle, it'll, it'll arm wrestle you with either hand. Oh, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait till you see it do the worm. All by itself? Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. It fucking just detaches, jumps off, and I'm just like watching it go across the room, tries to impress me. I give it a high five. Detachable penis. I don't know why, but that phrase has been in my life since I was like 12. Mm, Thanks to uh, Sam Kinison. That's what it is? Yeah, Sam Kinison did a routine on detachable penis. He's like, he's like, "Uh, yeah, honey, uh, the guys want to know if I can go out for the weekend. And uh, uh, what, what, you want to keep the penis? Honey, the guys are all taking theirs. Uh, yeah, she said no fucking way, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it was guess, pretty funny. I guess I mean, he, it, comes from. it was, you gotta look it up. It's much better than that. It's like, yeah, yeah, she said no fucking way, guys. <laughs> he's like, he's like, nope, you're not taking the penis on a boy's trip. Yeah. Yeah. So, so do you like my, my little recording I did, huh? Sounded pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I did. I like that. I also like yeah. the, the Taco Bell picture you sent me because I, I think I'm, I'm one of the ones that should be offed and at that point because I know Taco Bell doesn't agree with my body when I eat it. <laughs> oh, shit, man. There would only be, what, 2% of the population would be left. Oh, Those I think people. there's more than that. You should see the lines at Taco Bell late at night. I think it's more than 2%. Yeah, but just because they're lining up and enjoying it doesn't mean they're digesting it properly and their body, well, you know, accommodating them. That's that's true. We don't I know mean, what they're I, doing. You, you could I, follow each one of them home and then follow the next six hours of their life and see how many dumps they have to take, how many wipes they have to do. Yeah, there you go. You Way too just, many. Just analyze their poop like they did when they were trying to find whether COVID strains were in the poop. I'm like, I'm glad I didn't have that job. Are you, are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. You didn't know they did that. Yeah. They um, were, they, they were, uh, they were testing the sewer systems to uh, track the spread of, of like how, prevalent covid was in areas and whether it was different strains and all kinds of shit i'm like well literally all kinds of shit that's fucked up and then one day it was just gone just one day you just wake up and it's gone yeah well and then one and then the flu came back it was really fucking weird yeah, that's so I, weird. I don't know the, the flu was gone for like two fucking years and well man. it saw that somebody else was doing its job and figured meh i'll take a break i'm going on yeah day day. i've been working since you know the dawn of fucking time and now they got COVID, so shit, they don't need me no more. Yeah, so, oh well, I, I don't miss it. Uh, well, I just watched an old Wes Anderson movie. That was that was interesting. Uh, are you much of a Wes Anderson fan as far as movies? If you could name a movie that I've seen of his, then off the top of my head, I couldn't name any Wes Anderson movies. Well, the one I just watched was Moonrise Kingdom. Had Bruce Never Willis, Edward Norton, Bill Murray, of course. Francis McDermott, Tilda Swinton, Jason Schwartzman, and somebody I've never heard of. It's pretty. It was a pretty good movie. Uh, well, there was you know Rushmore. There was uh, Bottle Rocket. There was uh, the Royal Ten of Bottle Tino Bombs. I yeah, I haven't seen Bottle bombs. Rocket. And seen the Ten of Bombs. Yeah, I haven't seen Bottle Rocket yet. It's, I got a request. Seen Rushmore. Yeah. So it's good stuff. I mean, I, you know, obviously he has a very uh, stylized type of directing. It's it's quirky. This one, you know, I, I like it. What was the other one he did? I think didn't he do that movie like about like a a hotel like in Europe or something? I can't remember uh, the name of it. Let's see here, the Grand Budapest or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was it. That was really good. I like that movie. That also, my kid uh, wanted me to go see the new one, the the Nuclear City one or the 
Nuketown. Oh Indian yeah. Is that a, I didn't I didn't know that was Wes Anderson. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Uh Life oh, Aquatic you... Life Aquatic was uh Steve uh what's his name? Zuzu or whatever. Yeah. That was that was with Bill Murray. The Darjeeling Limited, the Fantastic Mr. Fox. Isle of Dogs. Never seen yeah. I'll have to go see that. The Grand, I, I guess Bud- it, the Grand Budapest Hotel. Yes, that was one of his, 2014. I, I guess you can say I'm not a fan because I haven't seen a lot of those, and I watch a lot of movies. Yeah, you know, I've actually seen more than I thought. I've never seen Bottle Rocket. I've seen uh, Rushmore. I've seen the Royal Tenenbaums. I've seen The Life Aquatic. I haven't seen The Darjeeling Limited. I've seen The Fantastic Mr. Fox, which is like a weird stop animation type movie he did. Uh, then I just saw Moonrise Kingdom, saw the Grand Budapest, haven't seen Isle of Dogs, and I haven't seen the French Dispatch. I've never even heard of that one. And then, of course, the new one, Asteroid City. So, there we go, saw, Asteroid City. Yeah, yeah. So I'd say I'm probably just slightly over half of his, his movies. They're definitely very odd, you know, very wow. stylized, I guess. I find that I don't watch a lot of movies that I've already seen again. Yeah, anymore. like I used to watch rewatch movies all the time. I would buy movies and I would like watch the shit out of the VHS or the DVD or the Blu-ray, but or, or, last the, night, or the or the Steel Edition, right? Yes. Well, I mean, I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> didn't need to buy those, but obviously I bought them because I'm yeah. a collector whore. <laughs> but, uh, yesterday I was going through Disney Plus. I'm like, I got a couple hours. You know, both kids are out of the house. They're going to be coming back, and I watched The Martian again, which I really liked it. I saw it in the theater with. When Matt Damon gets left on Mars. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. When he's trying to grow like the potatoes. Yeah. And, and yeah, I yeah. forgot how fucking great that movie was. I, I was like, wow, this movie's like two, two and a quarter hours long. So I was like, ah, it's a long fucking time. And I just sat there enthralled for two hours and 12 minutes, just happily watching something that, that I'd already seen before. Yeah. And then I put on Vacation Friends. I don't know if you watched that. It's a newer movie with John Cena from a couple of years ago. It's fucking I haven't hilarious. seen that one. Uh, but yeah, I started I'll have watching to check that. It out. Started watching that again because it's funny. I just needed something to lighten the mood. And apparently it's got a sequel coming out at the end of next month on Hulu. So probably Disney Plus. Nice. Yeah, man. I I wouldn't mind watching Peacemaker again with John Cena. Brilliant, right? Just yeah, fantastic. I, I do hope that with the whole reboot and from what I've heard, he does plan on making a second season of Peacemaker is what I've heard. And I hope that that's true. I think it's it's really weird for the for the DC stuff. Like I'm a DC fan. Like all my comics, and my tattoos are all DC related, more than Marvel. But DC just craps the bed when they push it out. I just I think they're on the right track now because they have somebody who's in charge in charge, who's making right. decisions and has a a vision, has a plan, and is fucking great at his job. And I went and saw the Flash a couple weeks ago, and it's getting oh, yeah? shit on left, right, and center. That was one of the best movies I've seen in the last ten years. Really, it was fucking amazing. It was it was fucking brilliant. It was amazing. I can't even. Th- those are just two words that I know that I could use to describe something that good. I'm sure there's many out there, but a plethora of words out there that could be used to de- describe something so groundbreaking. Uh, it wasn't groundbreaking, but it was fucking awesome. Yeah. Do you, so do you, do you think then that really all this shit on it? It's just a political hit piece on it. Yeah. Uh, the the shit is. Snyder fans who refuse to let the fact that Henry Cavill is gone go. And they're just shitting on the fact that it's no longer Zack Snyder. And they, for some reason, they hate James Gunn, which I can't figure out because all the people who are probably Snyder fans Mm -hmm. probably liked all the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. But for some reason, not having Cavill or Ben Affleck back is, is losing fan base, which don't get me wrong. Affleck is my favorite Batman in the last 20 years. <clears throat> I, I think he's amazing at it. Yeah. I and mean, I loved Cavill. I think it's great, but if you want to start fresh and work your way forward, you, you have to somehow cut some of the trim, the fat. And I, I don't know what James Gunn is doing, but the guy he just hired to be Superman looks exactly like Henry Cavill 20 years ago. Yeah. So I, I don't think Henry Cavill is out. I think he's out as Superman as we know him, but he's going to be an older version of Superman, Kingdom Come Superman, an yeah. Alex Ross version. So I think I think there's some backdoor deals going on, and I really truly do think that Cavill is going to be Superman somewhere within the multiverse. 
I think you could be right. I would, I would, I would believe that as well. They look so um, similar. The Flash was fucking great, man. I, I'm so sad that I got shit on because finally DC did something right. After 15 years of trying, they finally did something right. I mean, Wonder Woman was in it. Affleck was in it. Oh, they were. No, fuck yeah. There was there's like four Superman in it. There was three uh, Batman in it. Like George Clooney's Bruce Wayne is in it. Yeah, I heard that. Nicholas Cage Superman is in it. Yeah, I heard that too. That's hilarious. Uh Chris I, I, I know Superman. he I know he speaking of Nicolas Cage, we still have to have our Nicolas Cage <laughs> episode. Do. Yeah, Christopher Reeve was in it. The the chick that played Supergirl in the eighties, I don't remember her name. Wow. She was in it. Like old versions of them or just like digital or like CGI'd? Type oh, of like version. digitally older versions of them. I don't uh, think they used any new footage. Yeah. Okay. But here, here's where it gets really weird. Like, because you know, uh, you have Zack Snyder who has his Justice League and he has his characters, and then you hear James Gunn pretty much said, "We're not taking you. We're not taking you. Uh, we don't know about Wonder Woman. Gal Gadot will keep you around. We don't know yet. Like, we don't know. So just you know, sit by the phone and wait. And then when you're watching the Flash, the thing that was never addressed was whether or not. Aquaman is going to be there. Like, is Jason Momoa? It wasn't mentioned that he was fired. He has Aquaman 2 coming out in December. But right. at, the, at the end of The Flash, Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller, so The Flash and Aquaman, are walking out of a bar and Aquaman is fucking wasted. And he's just like listening to Barry tell him about the story of what he just went through. And uh, he said, he's just really weird. Like, Arthur, that the oddest thing is no matter how many different universes I traveled to, you were always the Aquaman. Always. So when we saw different Superman, it was different Superman, different Batman. But for some reason, every time we saw Aquaman on any universe, it was played by Jason Momoa. Uh-huh. Which means that if there is a reboot, they're going to use the Jason Momoa as Aquaman. Does right. that make sense? Well, it would make sense to me. But then they also said the movie coming out in December has no ties to the new gun universe. It's a standalone Aquaman story. It could be lying. I, mean, I don't know. You know. I think they're they're trying to like sweep it all under the rug and start fresh. I'm well, just maybe happy. It won't, maybe maybe it won't be Aquaman. It'll be Aqua Lad or something. <laughs> uh, Aqu- Aqua Woman. Yeah, Aquafina. Oh, Aquafina <laughs> works. <laughs> but yeah, it, yeah. It, it truly does make me happy that DC put together the Flash. It was really really well done, and it's just a shame that that's where that storyline ends. And now there's like a reboot coming, which I'm excited for because I fucking love James Gunn. The dude knows how to craft a story. And he did say that Peacemaker is going to stick around and Amanda Waller is going to stick around. So like the, the what's the girl that played Amanda Waller? Uh, Viola Davis? Yeah, Viola Davis. They're keeping her on as Amanda Waller and they're keeping him as Peacemaker. And you know the, the blonde chick in Peacemaker? Oh, yeah. Yeah. She was in at the end of Shazam playing the same character. Shazam 2. Hmm. Huh. Which came out after they said they were taking over the new universe. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm get I'm so I'm guessing though that if uh if Viola Davis is still doing her character, then that means there might be another Suicide Squad movie. Uh James Gunn said yesterday there's no plans in his itinerary at all whatsoever for new super uh Suicide Squad. Hmm. But she's getting her own TV series, like Peacemaker, Who? but it's called Waller. Oh really? Hmm. That could be interesting, I guess. Well, I mean, if it's done by James Gunn, I'm pretty sure he's going to do it justice. Well, I, I would imagine. Uh, that's that's pretty crazy. Although, like I said, I would I would think that it would be the perfect setup for there to be more Suicide Squad. But, you know. She was even in the Black Adam movie, Amanda Waller. Oh, that's right. She was. You saw that she movie? Was. Yeah, I saw Black Adam. I, I don't know why people shit on that. It was fun to watch. It was a, it was a it was, it was a okay. It was okay. I mean, it was it was entertaining. It was a weird twist how they made him like the original dude's dad. You yeah. know, instead of the instead of the way uh, the uh canon kind of is, you know. How great was Pierce Brosnan though as Dr. Oh, Fink? yeah, I know. I would love He's to pretty, keep him yeah. around. Yeah, he was pretty badass. Then again, it's Pierce Brosnan. He's fucking awesome no matter what. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do like Pierce Brosnan. I've always, I've always liked him as an actor. Uh, I, you mean, into... you've always had a crush on him and thought maybe one day the two of you could start something, something. Yeah, beautiful. yeah. Oh, oh Pierce. Uh, 
Yeah. He's getting up there in age, man. They're all getting up there in age. All these people that we grew up with, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't know how I, I like Ezra Miller, Ezra Miller as the flash. I don't really like the guy in general on in real life. Uh, as far as some of his choices and things that he does, yeah. But but I thought he does. I thought he did an interesting version of the Flash. I thought he was entertaining. So I I don't crap on it. I will. I may or may not go see it in the theater. I haven't seen it yet. I'm so I haven't seen anything. I almost went to see that Sound of Freedom movie today, but I didn't go. The, so. the Flash was out for a week here, and then they pulled it. Really? Yeah. Transformers is still playing from like three weeks ago. They already pulled the flash. They pulled the flash after a week. Wow, the flash but, is still playing here. I, I would watch in the theater. It's a. I went to IMAX. Like I drove to Edmonton to watch it on IMAX to see the oh, yeah. baddest version of it. To see Michael Keaton in the bat suit jumping around doing shit on the like the IMAX screen, totally worth it. Plus Supergirl. Like I'm a big Supergirl fan. Like comics and shit. Big Supergirl fan. I don't. When I first saw the pictures of her, I was like, Supergirl, short black hair. That's not the Supergirl I want to see. But when I saw the the movie, I was like, I could get behind this Supergirl 100%. She was brilliant. Yeah. So it uh-huh. was, yeah, it, it, turned, it turned my thought process that made me realize that they did a good job. I'll just shut the fuck up and enjoy the you, movie. You could get behind her 100%. Well, I, I could, maybe in front or underneath, maybe on top. A- anywhere she'd let you. Well, let. Yeah. What, what's this let? She's oh, Supergirl. Sorry. It's 2023. Never mind. She has to let you. Yes. Yes. Not, may, so. may may I mount you now? Yes, you may. Okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to get your consent on that. You got to get it in writing. Get a bunch of yeah. signatures. Get it notarized. On Have a film. witness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Could you guys come in here and sign off on this? Uh, I need to. I need a witness. Uh, you you're naked. You think it's going to come to that one day? Probably. Did you ever see the movie Cherry 2000? No. Uh, okay, it's an old movie from the 80s or 90s, and it's about like uh, this guy, like in the future. It's like there's been like an apocalypse and stuff, but there's like these robots that are like companions, and so his Cherry 2000 basically gets fried by a water accident, and he's trying to get a new model, and they don't make these models anymore because of this apocalypse, right? But there's a supposed place out in the desert you know well you have the mutants and all kinds of crazy crap whatever uh that he could find a new model of it so he's on this he's on this uh quest to get a new a new cherry 2000 right yeah but anyway during that when he's trying to hire this girl which is played by michelle pfeiffer who's like this supposedly kind of badass kind of detective person they're in this bar and these two people are sitting there like negotiating a relationship like on a date with a lawyer like it's what it's came to that everything has to be like negotiated like uh well i'll take you out for dinner and i'll spend this much no i i you should spend this much and they're like right and it's all it's just it's just a little bit of a scene but it's hilarious that Basically, a lawyer is having to draft up like their date, you know, that le- legally binding and type of stuff. There's so Pretty- many movies that come out about the future and a lot of shit is right. Oh, yeah. I'm really yeah. hoping that's not the case. I'd, I'd rather not have to pay a lawyer to be present to negotiate date terms. Well, you know how to solve that. Don't date. Mm. <laughs> I don't I don't want to sit at home and I mean, I already sit at home and touch myself enough. I, I well, wouldn't mind somebody else doing it, but I suppose well, I'd have to negotiate. Dutch Rudder, baby. Double lawyer. <laughs> Dutch <Double>. Rudder, baby. <laughs> well, you got to get uh, some it, so it's got to be a double Dutch Rudder every time. Yeah, yeah. Well, ah, uh, unless you you lose a bet, and the bet is that you got to give your friend a Dutch Rudder. Yeah, I, you know, I'm hoping that maybe we will get to the point where we have. I don't know. It's like part of me is kind of like I hope we get to the point where we have like that realistic of like companions and the other part of me is like oh at that point they'll just kill us and take over so like a female you know. robot slave yeah well not slave well, willing com- willing companion with no choice <laughs> <laughs> well if it's a robot it's essentially a slave if you can get it to do whatever cook clean laundry yeah make, make the love make the love and what if, if they're not they're not quite designed for the love making, but they have been programmed to do really good, really fast Dutch rudders? Because oh, with the, you go. <laughs> that's okay then. And then it malfunctions and it just 
jerks it right <laughs> off. What happened um, to him? He yeah. got castrated by his his cherry twenty twenty. So uh, it'd have to be the more than a twenty twenty at this point, like a twenty thirty. Twenty thirty. Twenty fifty. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of uh, movies, are you excited about this potential Blue Beetle coming out? Talking about DC. Uh, I am excited for it. I do like the character. I read a bunch of the comics. And I do like that James Gunn said that that is technically going to be the first movie in the James Gunn, like, DC universe. Right. So my guess is they did a lot of reshoots with a lot of James Gunn rewriting some stuff. I I'd believe that. I I hope it comes out okay. The trailer looks like bomb ass. Like that thing looks fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just an obscure character. It's just weird to me that that would be, that's the route you're going. But you think about it, he kind of took a somewhat obscure Galleries of the Galaxy and turned them into a hit. So maybe he wanted to start with a character that didn't have so much weight to it that it, like, you know, had overwhelming expectations. And that he could do what he wanted with a more minor character. Well, I'm not going to lie. When I first saw that they were making a Guardians of the Galaxy movie, I was like, Marvel, what the fuck are you doing? You're in such a such a track record here of just being blessed with these amazing fucking movies. And you're going to come up with that horse shit? And then when I saw it, I was like, oh, I guess I'm wrong again. And that's okay. No, don't worry. They've made up for the, the horse shit level lately, so... Well, I mean, you that's know. what people say. I, I mean, out of all their movies, I didn't like The Eternals. Yeah, I didn't. Really and like I'm never going to watch it again. Like, it's never no. going to ever be viewed no. with me in front of it. But I, I liked Thor Love and Thunder. I thought it was fun. I liked Quantumania. That was good. I haven't seen that yet. I, I like seen that Super yet. Invasion every week. Yeah. I enjoy. I enjoyed the all the TV shows. Every one of them. Even She-Hulk? It was actually one of my favorites. Really? Yeah, her huh. and Bruce's uh, interactions together were great. She-Hulk breaking the fourth wall was great. Seeing Daredevil was great. There was a lot of good stuff in it. Yeah. And another thing that I noticed, I was watching and she was walking through a bar and I saw on one of the walls there was a QR code. Like, do you know what a QR code is? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I saw that and so I rewound it and I paused it till it was clear. So I kept rewinding and pausing and I took my phone up to it and it captured it. And it took me to a free She-Hulk number one comic online to read. Huh. So I was like, that's fucking cool. So then I do a Google search. I was like, oh, I just found a QR code on She-Hulk, the TV show. And apparently they did it in the Hawkeye TV show and another TV show. And they just, yeah, they just send you a link to somewhere in Marvel for something. So it's just a little. But yeah, when I saw it, I was like, I wonder if that's a legit one or if that was just a poster on the wall and they filmed it like an actual bar. I wonder where this is going to take me. But no, it was it was planned. It was posted. And. It's just an Easter egg. So yeah, if you're watching those Marvel shows and you see a QR code somewhere, like on a desk, on a file folder, just pause it and take out your phone and see what it gets you. Yeah. Well, someday I'll have to actually get Disney Plus or whatever and I'll watch all those shows, but it isn't going to be anytime soon. Disney Plus is awesome. There's so much good shit on there and they own so many companies that there's so many movies on there. Yeah, I'm sure. It's just there's no point in me paying for it when i have little to no free time there's just yeah. no point you know uh, i feel you you know that's what you got to make time you got to sleep less <laughs> i sleep too little as it is i did manage to get in i watched to uh two or three movies I-, I finished up the tulsa king show which was awesome awesome show that's yeah. with uh stallone yeah i think that's yeah. on one of the apps i have i should watch it yeah it's pretty cool i liked it a lot uh i watched that and I watched uh, an old movie I never saw. Um, apparently, it's uh, Bruce Willis, not Bruce Willis, uh, uh, Bill Murray Weekend. So I watched What About Bob, which is an old movie from the 90s. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. O- on the boat? Yeah, on the boat. Oh, fucking He's great like, movie. I'm, I'm sailing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it was Richard Dreyfus. Richard, Richard yeah. Dreyfus was really good in it. Uh, and, um, and then I just watched this... Uh, this movie, the one I just told you about, the Moonrise Kingdom, the Wes Anderson movie, that had Bill Murray in it as well. So, uh, well, now you need to watch Quantumania because Bill Murray's in that. Are you serious? Yeah, really? He's yeah. really in it. He is huh. in it. Huh? He lives within the quantum realm. Really? Well, I mean, not Bill Murray, but a character Bill Murray yeah, yeah. plays lives within yeah. the quantum realm. Yeah, the real Bill Murray. Yeah, just in his free time, Bill Murray, when he's not, you know, pretending to be a zombie. 
Yeah. He just heads down to the quantum realm. I did watch another. What did I watch? I watched another movie that I hadn't seen. What was it? It had. Um, oh, no reservations. It had Catherine Zeta Jones in it, and Aaron Eckhart. Okay. Who, who played Two Face in yeah. the Christian Bell movies? Yeah. Um, and I'd never seen it, and I watched it with the girl that I'm I'm seeing, and uh. I didn't realize this must have been one of Abigail Breslin's first roles. She played the the young girl in it. She must have been like only seven or eight years old. She was really good. So, and this was before she did uh, the Zombieland movies. This is about two or three years before Zombieland. And she was still pretty young in Zombieland. She was, like early, yeah. yeah. So she was she was really good. It was really funny to see her. I was like, holy crap, that's that's uh, you know Breslin. Abigail Breslin. I find it really uh, weird when I see movies on one of the streaming platforms that I didn't even know existed from like 10 years ago. Yeah. I'm watching like a, a Chris Pine movie. It's like, when did this come out? Then I saw a Chris Evans movie. It's like, when the fuck did this come out? And then the other night I watched an Antonio Banderas movie from last year. And while I was on there, when it, when you finish it, it says, oh, you like this. How about these? And it gave me like five other Antonio Banderas movies from 2020 through 2023. I was like, where the fuck did these get released? Yeah, yeah like, where? When? Yeah, there, there, there's like two or three where he's a hitman. Like, it's just fucking weird. Huh. I did watch the, I did watch, speaking of Antonio Banderas, I did watch the uh, the last Puss in Boots movie. That oh, I, I heard really good yeah. things about it. It was good. It was good. Uh, I enjoyed it. The Antonio last Banderas wish. is in the new Indiana Jones movie. Yeah. For like 20 minutes. Yeah. Huh. Which I thought was really good. People once again are, I, I think people expect a movie to change their life. That's what I think they expect. Oh, I'm paying 12 bucks. This movie better fucking change my life. It's like, you're paying 12 bucks. If you're entertained for an hour and a half, you got your money's worth. I feel like if I, if I can spend less than an hour's worth of my pay and I get two or three hours of enjoyment out of it that's yeah. a that's a bonus yeah you know and that's what this indiana jones was it it was fun it was exciting uh, mads mickelson was in it he's a bad guy he's amazing yeah and the girl from you never watched fleabag did you no no i know who you're talking about phoebe collar weights or Bates or <laughs> whatever the hell her name is waller bridge <laughs> Uh, feminist extraordinaire yes uh, yeah so she, she's in it and she does a really good job and the first like 10 15 minutes is all cgi'd 1940s harrison ford from his like 30s yeah Matt nicholson when he's younger it was awesome to watch the movie was good people shit on it but yeah like you said 12 bucks for two hours fuck sign me up it, man, I'm get, I'm uh, I'm not going to the right movie theater here on a matinee. It's only six dollars for me. So nice, yeah. So. It it beats Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which was just bad. Well, yeah, it doesn't it, take much to beat that. That was a it, piece of crap. It was just bad. Yeah, and I heard a new rumor today because they're filming Deadpool three right now. Yeah, the new rumor is that you never watched Loki the TV show, did you? No. Okay. Well, Loki ends up after he dies or gets taken away in the tesseract he ends up at a place called the tva and what oh, right they, right right yeah yeah and their job is to get rid Fix of other timelines, timelines. Uh, so they, they yeah. want one timeline so you got to kill the variants so any spider-man who's not the spider-man they want to live they just prune them is what they call them pretty much get rid of them wow. and Apparently Deadpool, because he you watched Deadpool too, right? And he had that time travel yeah. watch from cable. Apparently yeah. that really pissed off the TVA, so now they're after him. Uh, and he's got Wolverine, like Hugh Jackman in the yellow Wolverine suit, and they're trying to escape the TVA. And apparently Mark Ruffalo is in it as the Hulk. And the Hulk is chasing them down in the forest. And there's an amazing comic where you first meet Wolverine in the comics right. and he's fighting the Hulk. So I think they might redo a little bit of that, which would be Fucking brilliant. Yeah. As long as they don't rip him in half. Well, I mean, he'll just heal. Both of them will yeah. Wolverine at Deadpool. They'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the new Deadpool. Owen Wilson from the Loki TV show. Hopefully we get to see Loki in it. We're going to see a bunch of variants from very different universes. Fantastic Fours, Ghost Riders, Electra. Really? Yeah, man. Yeah. Like Ben Affleck, Daredevil, there's 
if you can get Hugh Jackman back to be Wolverine, you know they're they're willing to do whatever it takes to make this movie fucking amazing, and it's going to be amazing. Well, yeah, I look forward to that, though. That'll be good. Yeah, man. So, but yeah, we've talked about quite a bit, so uh, I'm not sure what we would really say this episode's about other than, I guess, DC Universe and state of, uh, state of things. It's just a shoot the shit? Yeah, shoot the shit. Okay. All right, let's see here. As far as shooting the shit, here's something for you. Again, I'm not sure what self-respecting man would go see it by himself. Let me guess. Magic Mike 3? <laughs> no, I saw that. No, Barbie. Like, like seriously. Well, I mean, look the at Barbie the Barbie movie. Yeah, I mean, but, but uh, I mean. Uh, do you not think that the two leads are beautiful? Pretty old people to be playing Barbies, but sure. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm never going to go see it. It looks, you know, I mean, I don't know. I've got Maybe no I desire. Just, What's yeah, I got, to I've watch got no Barbie desire. Movie? But but the funny thing is what I've been reading is that they're saying they've got like 45 more toy lined up to do movies for. I'm like, are you fucking shitting me? with the, It's the Jack movie like where they play Jacks. I mean, what the fuck? 45 movies? From Mattel? Because Mattel yes. owns Barbie, right? Yeah. What else does Mattel own? Like what what is their? Oh, well, they own He-Man. You got He-Man. Uh, well, that, that's a doable movie. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Um oh God, I don't know what, what all they own. Um Play Doh? Do they own Play Doh? I don't know. Uh let's see here. Mattel, Boy Brands, mm, American Girl. Well, you just saw yeah. Barbie. You really Barbie. want to put out another one? <laughs> Big Jim from the seventies. Remember Big Jim? Not at all. At all. It's like a G.I. Joe like action team a knockoff. Uh well, Hot Wheels. That was already up. That's, that movie's already being worked on. Hot Wheels. Yeah, that's going to do well, man. Yeah, I see. Masters of the Universe. Uh, they have Fisher Price. And they got a Max Steel. See, you're not you're not tantalizing me with absolutely it, anything. It, it, exactly. That's the whole point of what I'm saying is that I can't think of how the hell they're going to come up with. 45 toys that are worth making movies out of. I mean, Barbie know? is a no brainer. Yeah. Right. Literally. It's like the Smurfs. We're yeah. going to make a Smurfs movie. Um, yeah, that makes sense. We're going to make a Transformers movie. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. Right. Right. Ugh. Yeah. I, I just, I just don't see where they're, um, where they're getting, uh, 45 movies from, but well, they must be pretty happy with how Barbie turned out. Like it's not released yet. So exactly as the public, we have no idea if it's good or not, but clearly if the executives are trying to push 45 new toy branded movies, they must really, really like what came out of the Barbie movie. Yeah, I, I, I guess so. I mean, I mean, I think, you know, obviously Margot Robbie's hot and yeah. I definitely, I definitely love what she did as Harley Quinn. Although I don't necessarily think that the movies did her justice uh in a lot of ways but she you did a good job i thought you didn't they were say okay. anything about ryan gosling oh well, ryan gosling's okay you know but hot I, I guess i don't judge dudes so you say that in public but in private come on man there's nobody listening just just hey say man he, he he locked down uh, he locked down what's her name, Eva Mendez, right? He, and she, and she decided she went from I don't want kids to I want his babies. That's what that I mean. That's that's how good looking he was. I, I, I for think her. there's a, a word that you like to use to describe a a man in his peak physical appearance. I I do. You do. We used it when you talked about Magic Mike. He's a specimen. Oh, <laughs> he's a specimen. Yeah, he's a specimen. I'm sure, so I, I'm sure I'm sure he's donated a few specimens too. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that once Barbie comes out, they're gonna make a whole bunch of new movies. Yeah, I mean, I guess they released Barbie and then Hot Wheels. Like they're two biggest sellers. They're like, man, this is gonna work out well. Well, yeah, they're your two biggest sellers, but what are you gonna work on for Fisher Price? The little phone with the eyes that wobble back and forth from the 70s? Like, what the fuck? Or the, the popper? Like, do you remember the the handheld thing that had a it blew on the bottom and it had a popper. And when the wheels turned, it would just pop things. You, little kids had them. I don't, I don't know remember it, that. I don't remember. It, uh, it it's essentially looks like a mini vacuum cleaner for children. And they pushed it around. And every time the wheels did a revolution, a popper would pop up the little balls inside the glass top with the plastic top. 
Okay. You, you've played Trouble, right? Where you hit the dice with the pop in the middle, the bop. Maybe. Not ringing the bell off. The you top never of played. My head. You never played like a board game where you have a dice in the middle of the board game and there's a plastic bubble above it. And oh, you push it down. I've seen that. I've never played it. No. So that that's what that thing was that you pushed around. Every time the wheels turned, a thing would pop up. Whatever was inside that little glass dome or plastic dome. Oh, okay. I can see you're super intrigued. So I know that when when Mattel re- releases that movie, you're going to be like, fuck yeah, I'm lining up for this shit. IMAX, baby. Yeah, 120 fucking percent, man. I've never I've never been more excited for it. Wow, you well, know? I mean, you never know. I, I thought Guardians of the Galaxy was going to be trash, and it changed, it changed my opinion quite quickly. I thought a lot of movies, I think, would be like trash. And then when I see them, I'm like, oh, all right, cool. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, who who knows? You know what? Maybe it'll be it'll be really freaking awesome. I mean, uh, I can't. I uh, I they can't. Just, they just need to put Margot Robbie in every single one of them, and they'll be fine. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, Margot Robbie's awesomely hot. I mean, I, I would I would do many naughty things for her. Let's just with, put it that way. With a lawyer approving all the transactions. Well, of course, yes. That's right. They'd have to like write up the contract. I, I'd make sure she'd wanted to do the butt stuff. So, you know, yeah, I'd have to probably pay extra for that. You usually do. You usually <laughs> do. <laughs> yeah, you usually do. Well, there's, there's extra cleaning that needs to be done before you do it. It's not a spur of the moment thing. Butt stuff is not a, well, we're going to do butt stuff. You're like, eh, maybe, maybe tomorrow. Maybe yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not one of those things you just, spring upon them other than wrong hole wrong hole <laughs> I, i've watched porn that does that yeah it slips out and the girl's quite a uh, surprised by the whole ordeal and the guy is just smiling he's like all right yeah <laughs> yeah all right all right all right all right that's what that's what uh matthew mcconaughey was talking about all right all right all right <laughs> before we wrap up do you have any other movie stuff movies you watched any movie ideas you might have hopefully nobody's uh no, I did have a I did have a movie idea. I can't remember it off the top of my head. I got mm. a bunch of I got a bunch of classic movies. Although the one I'm most excited about is I have got well, I'm kind of excited about the Dungeons and Dragons movie, the new one with Chris Pine in it. Oh yeah, that just got released on Netflix this week, so I'm gonna watch yeah. that. And uh, I got John Wick four, so that will surely be you know totally unrealistic. <laughs> you know, I, I really enjoyed John Wick one. I kind of liked two. Three was okay. It's just, I love watching the guy fight and kill people, but I just can't handle the fact that every single person on earth belongs to this assassin's guild. Right. Like how many assassins in this world are there? Is there a high calling for assassins? Well, I guess there is. Every single person on the street, every single person in in a car, like they all seem to, I don't know. I mean, it's a movie. I, I, I know it's not supposed to be realistic, but the first one was fucking well yeah, the, done. the first one was amazing i mean yeah. just d- d- the the premise the whole revenge thing you know the whole him going ape shit over them killing the dog that was uh you know spoiler alert if you haven't seen john wick one there you know being the last thing from his now dead wife you know that that was a uh you know I, I I get it, you know. He could go ape shit over it, but after that, it just it just continually just like, you know. Next thing you know, it's gonna be like machete kills in space, <laughs> you know. Or it, it's it's like it's like how far are you going to 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 take it? You know, I mean, well, uh, I'm still watching Fast and Furious movies, and I'm still excited to go watch. Them. <laughs> so they've been to space. They've been on nuclear subs. They've taken safes through downtown cores they've come back to life every single one of them who's died is almost back to life almost every wow single... well the only I think people they should... missing is jesse and vince now but everybody else has come back from the dead they, they need to do like an inner space thing like with like dennis quay like you know where they go inside yep. of somebody's body the fast and furious uh uh you know in the last one i was watching dom gets pinned on this dam so he's on a dam he can't go forward. He can't go backwards because these semi trucks pulled up to block him. And I was just waiting and waiting to hear. And you look over and it's Optimus Prime, but it wasn't. Uh, I was so disappointed that it wasn't Optimus Prime because that that's where they can go next. Oh, uh, yeah. 
Well, you know, they're going to have a GI Joe uh um uh crossover with Transformers. Why not? I, I thought you were gonna, I thought you were going to say so he took the car and he drove down the side of the dam like holy well, shit. Well, no, he did do that. That's actually how he escaped. Did he? Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Wow. He, he drove right through the barrier and down the not as steep side of yeah, okay, whatever. Just just yeah. watch it and just uh, like, leave your brain at home, leave logic at home, and just enjoy the the ride. Yeah, uh, but what only if I'm family? <laughs> well, yeah, every everybody comes. Everybody, who, everybody who's a fan that's in the audience, they're honorary family. <laughs> Everyone, part of, yeah. Dom's gonna have a hell of a lot of explaining to do at the family picnic because there's gonna be a ton of people showing up. Did you, Did you remember the first one very well? I've never seen the first one. I've only seen like two of them out of all oh. of them. Well, never no. mind. Yeah, I I don't know anything about it. It's it's the series really. I I've seen like the one that had like the last couple or something maybe, you know. There there's a scene in the first one where Paul Walker, who's a cop, you know, spoilers everyone. He's undercover and he's trying to track down who the thieves are. So he believes that Dom isn't involved, but he's going to go check his garage anyway. So he's breaking into dom's garage in the middle of the night and then dom walks in he's like what you doing brian and he's like well i'm just trying to see the the motors you're running because because i I work over at harry's which is like a high performance truck part place or car part place and he's like yeah uh, so i I just i I know that when hector came in he he was running three honda civics with spoon engines on top of that he just he just came into harry's and he ordered a three t66 turbos with nos and a motex system exhaust so then Dom's like, so yeah. you you are checking what everybody is going to be running? That way you can buy the better stuff? Like, that's what you're doing? You're going to check every car? And it's just a distraction, right? Because he was just there to actually look for the missing stolen shit. Right. So I started to post that on the internet. Whenever I'm reading a conspiracy theorist something on Facebook, they, they just post something like Ben Affleck's daughter wears a mask when they went out for dinner. And then I put, don't let the Ben Affleck's daughter's mask wearing distract you from the fact that Hector's going to be running three Honda Civics with spoon engines. And on top of all that, he came into Harry's and he ordered three T66 turbos with NOS and a Motec system exhaust. So I keep posting that on things and people are loving the fuck out of it. Like it's supposed to be a serious news story. And I go, don't let that distract you from the fact that Hector's going to be running three Honda Civics with spoon engines. And I, I think it's pretty fucking funny, but then again, I'm just doing it for myself and yeah, I'm enjoying it. I, I do like the comments I'm getting and the likes I'm getting from something as ridiculous as that. That's funny. That, that is pretty funny. I mean, it's, it's great that people are, uh, 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 enjoying it though. That's, so that's like the, good. all the, the sub that got imploded last week Uh huh. and all the billionaires died on it and stuff. And, every single news story about it i'm posting that like don't get don't let the news story of the titanic sub distract you from the fact that hector is trying to run three honda civics with spoon engines and it's a serious news story and people are liking it and people are like resharing it and stuff and i think that's pretty good no nobody nobody's shitting on me yet they're actually enjoying the the lighthearted humor that, that's pretty good. Have you seen the subway meme that's got the? It says our subs don't implode. Oh, no, no, I don't understand. <laughs> they would if Subway actually did that, they would get in trouble. Even though it's a genius. Oh yeah, no, but they make your butthole explode. I guess so. Not as much as Taco Bell, oh, or that no, place man. in Minneapolis that you ordered the chimichanga badingo. Dango, oh, the, the the chori, uh, the chori pollo. There you go. That's the, the, the chori pollo. Yes, it is. It is a little greasy. It's uh, like I said. It's a it's a couple of pounded flat like chicken with chorizo sausage on top of it, grilled with beans and rice. Yeah, it's a twenty. It's a twenty three wiper. Oh, you need totally. almost almost an and, entire roll. And, and I went. I had that before I went to a metal concert. Mm-hmm. I will say that I didn't get out of the bathroom before I took a horrendous dump, so I made sure I cleaned the pipes before I went on to the yeah, show. Yeah. yeah. So, I think on that note, we should probably call it a night. Let people enjoy that that imagery right there, Charlie Ray. And was it was it in the the festival outhouse or was it at the restaurant? Oh, was it the restaurant? I left them the what they gave me. So <laughs> you know, I wonder, I wonder how messy and dirty 
Mexican restaurant bathrooms are based off of the whiteies going in there. People like me yeah. and just <laughs> more than more than they should of the, the hot stuff that their body's not ready for. I wonder what damage they do to those bathrooms. You know, it, it, it my body actually tolerated it pretty well. Other than the fact that I had to go before I left the restaurant <laughs> after that, the rest of the night I was fine. You know, I, I made it even through up to my potential mugging in the, in the quick stop on the way back. You, you have the iron stomach from living in the States though. I do you, sort I could, of, I could go on a road trip with you and I'll, I'll stop every 20 minutes to take a dump. And you're like, what's going on? It's like uh us food. Yeah. <laughs> It's chemicals that, that, and artificial that, that, shit and everything I've eaten since I got here. It all tastes delicious, but it, it doesn't work for the body very well. You'd almost think that it seems like the people who sell us crap actually secretly hate us and want us to die. It's it's you'd almost think that the kind of almost, crap that they but, put in food. Hey, here's an idea. How many different colored chemicals can we put in this that might be potential carcinogenic? How many can we put in there, Bob? I don't know. Let's try three. See, they don't want to kill you though. They want you to go on medication. Oh That's yes, the yes, they want. Killing you would medication. be no money maker. There's no money in that. Well, there's the, we never solve anything anymore. America doesn't solve anything. Think about it. We don't solve anything because all the money's made in treating stuff. So you know, homeless problem. It's manageable. Keep giving me more money. I will manage it. I won't solve it. Oh, hell no, I won't solve it because then I won't have a job. But I'll manage the problem, and then I'll keep crying to you about how much we need more money. Hmm. So, I'm a pretty good manager. I think I should move down to the States and try and get a job. Hey, some of those homeless uh, fund managers make a quarter million dollars, man. So I'm good at managing go. things, but I'm also a good problem solver. So I'd only have the job for about a year. It would get fixed, and then they'd fire me. I'm thinking you should be a a vegan social influencer. Apparently, I hear they get paid pretty well. Sure of course, you got, you got to be you got to be a hot blonde, probably, to do it. But still, yeah, we can we can put you in a dress and shave the beard, and I'd be pretty. See, see what we can do. I'd be so pretty. I'd have to tuck. Well, of course. Do you tuck it into your butthole or just like up there? I don't know. I've never tried. What do you talk? I sure, whatever, man. You've tried. You've done it. That's why I'm asking. I don't be have shy. Not tried. My schlong's too small to, to to tuck it. So you just you just push it in like an Audi belly button. Just push yeah, it. Yeah, it's like a turtle trying to escape the <laughs> shell. Mine's a little bit bigger, not much. I I would have to tuck, but do you put it in the butt crack? How do you keep it tucked? Do you tape I, it? I have no idea. I have no idea. I, I I'm guessing you you wear you tuck it back and you wear some kind of like super tight underwear that keeps it in place i'm gonna have to take your word on the thought the, of that, yeah or your like thought the, like, on the word of that what, whatever like, like a sports brief like a sports bra holds the titties down well yeah. the the sports brief holds the johnson tucked back i guess i don't know ask target they were selling clothing designed for tucking so I've got like a pocket in it or something, you know, to tuck it back. All right. Well, I'm going to have to look into that. I'm sure we can do an episode after a Nicolas Cage one. We'll talk about tucking. I wonder if Nicolas Cage would tuck for a movie role. Nicolas Cage would do anything for a movie role. No, not that he's he, desperate, just that he wants to see if he can do it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like I said, I thought he did a pretty good version in Renfield. I thought he did a pretty good Dracula. So I'm going to leave our audience with the thought of tucking and Mexican food evacuation. <laughs> yes, probably not a good combination to be tucking and having a Mexican food evacuation. Well, you don't want to get stuff in your wiener hole. No, not you. Ha ha, wiener hole. <laughs> uh. <laughs> wiener hole indeed. Want to see my wiener? <laughs> <laughs> want to flick my wiener? Uh, so uh, yeah. I'm going to say a peace out to all the know it alls. Thanks for listening, everyone. It's, it's Thanks for listening to us ramble. As per usual. Yes. So, so what do you want to do here? You want me to record some of those intros still? Then we go ahead and do one? 
Okay. All right. Here, let me pull up the wording. Okay. All right. Here, let me find the wording. Okay. Ready? Hey, know-it-alls. Welcome back to another episode of the Answers for Everything podcast. Once again, we thank you for spending some of your free time with us. Don't forget to like and share on our socials. And if you have any questions that you want us to answer, just reach out on Instagram at AFE underscore podcast. That's A is an Apple, F is in Frank, E is an Edward, then the underscore symbol, then the word podcast. So pour yourself a stiff drink and enjoy the show. That's take one. Okay. Take two. Let's do take two. Yeah, well, I'm going to do it differently. Hey, know-it-alls. Welcome back to another sterling episode of Answers for Everything podcast with Mr. Clay and friends. Once again, we thank you for spending some of your fabulous free time with us. Don't forget to like and share on our socials. And if you have any burning questions that you want us to answer, just reach out on Instagram at AFE underscore podcast. That's anus. Frankly, enough. Then the underscore symbol, then the words podcast. So enjoy the show. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. All right. Which one do you like better? I'll do another one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just do a bunch of crazy shit. Okay. All right. Ready? Crikey, you know-it-alls. Welcome back to another episode of Answers for Everything podcast. Once again, we're going to be stumflummoxed by the amazing Mr. Clay. Spending your free time with us is probably a waste of your time. But don't forget to like and share on our socials. And if you have any questions that you want us to answer, just reach out on Instagram at AFE underscore podcast. That's AFE as in Apple Frank Edward, then the underscore symbol, then the word podcast. So pour yourself a stiffy and enjoy the show. <laughs> All right. That's three. I'm, I think we're probably good for there. Uh, unless you got a request. You got a request for anything? Anything you would change or do? Okay. Okay. We do one more. Hey, know-it-alls. Welcome back to another episode of the Answers for Everything podcast. Once again, Mr. Clay and his revolving cast of nasties that he might have on to entertain you welcomes you to spend some time with us. Don't forget to like and share on our socials. And if you have any questions that you want us to answer, you're probably just as crazy as we are. But reach out on Instagram at AFE underscore podcast. That's A is an apple, F is in flamer, and E is an enough because... Then you put the underscore symbol, then the word podcast. So sit back and enjoy the show. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love doing like intro shit. You know why? It's because whenever I do my radio show, I never plan out what I'm going to say. I just flick the mic on and I start talking. So I'll be, I'll be on there and I'll be like, you know, I don't know what I'm going to say. I'll be like, it's 12 o'clock. Do you know where your witches are? Hopefully not burning at the stake. But if you're not... You're here listening to the High Voltage Rock and Roll Radio Show in the middle of the night, and we appreciate that. And the witches appreciate that because you're not burning them. So let's get back to the music, you know, or something. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. 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 There you go. Oh, I'm sure I could do it. Yeah, sure. Why not? What my show? Sure, I can promote it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, you're listening to the high voltage rock and roll radio show with the night prowler. Oh, wait, nope. That's my other job. No, we're listening to another episode of Answers for Everything podcast with Mr. Clay and his motley crew of friends. Unfortunately, not the Wonder Twins, because that would be much more interesting. But in this case, we appreciate you spending some of your hard-fought free time with us. Don't forget to like and share on our socials. If you have any questions or want to send us anything naughty, just uh, send out 
to our Instagram at AFE underscore podcast. That's A is an anus, F as in frankly, and E is an F. Then the underscore symbol, then the word podcast. So if you have a drink, sit back, enjoy the show. <laughs> anus. I was actually saying, that's A is an anus, F as in frenulum, and E is in enough. <laughs>